on a very difficult topic, as I can say. Because philosophy is itself a very difficult one. The reason why is, if you ask anybody to say, what is philosophy? Every individual will give you a different meaning of philosophy. That's the one aspect. Then the second aspect, if you see, the term inquiry, which is itself a threatening one. If somebody will ask you that somebody is inquiring you, which gives a different perspective, and many people will pursue that word in a very different aspect. And since morning, uh, both the speakers have given a very valuable insight into the whole term or the whole theme of this one day international summit that is philosophical inquiry and reflection as a strategy for student engagement. And there is a strong relationship between philosophical inquiry and reflection. If one wants to reflect something means he or she has to inquire first. And when somebody inquires something means something has to be reflected. So reflection is itself a part of inquiry and when we inquire something means definitely there must be a reflection. So most of the time the inquiry as well as the reflection go hand in hand. And many times we expect this reflection in the classroom. And now the thing comes, why it is not just inquiry, why it is philosophical inquiry. And many of the times we say, inquiry can be done in sciences. Most of the social science teachers, language teachers, they many times claim that inquiry cannot be done in social sciences. Inquiry cannot be done in languages. It can be done only in sciences. But if you just go through the historical background of inquiry, we will come to know that philosophy was the base for everything. Whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever we realize, whatever we perceive, whatever research we carry out, everything have a base of inquiry that is philosophical inquiry. So in my presentation, I would like to give you a few ideas related to the philosophical inquiry as well as how reflection can be used in the teaching learning process from teacher's perspective as well as how best we can make our students to reflect on different things. So that is my idea in my presentation. Next slide please. Okay, the things which made me to present the views are something like this. I would like to highlight what philosophy is. You may be knowing your own philosophy. And the second important thing is, we hardly seek the truth or inquire the things in the day-to-day -day life situations. Because most of the time, whatever has been written, whatever has been spoken, we follow it. We hardly inquire the things. That is the second point, which made me to add few views into my presentation. And we all follow the different religions. When we talk about philosophy, naturally we connect the philosophy with the religions. And everybody follows different religion. And many of the times we say that logicness and philosophy or religion will not move together. You cannot claim yourself into the different religions also. Is it so? That we discuss. And if you just see the school situations, right from the beginning of the schooling, we instruct our children that talk less in the classroom. Shut your mouth. Don't talk. These are the important words we use to give to our students when they start schooling in the different school atmospheres. Next, we are also talking about democracy. India is a very good democratic country and a big democratic country and school is a replica of society. When school is a replica of society, School should be in a democratic setup. It should follow the principles of democracy. Everyone should get an equal chance in representing themselves or reflection. And most of the time, 
we we pursued that in the society in the classrooms teachers talk more and students talk less we are also in favor of that we never allow our children to talk more i even our leaders talk more and the people talk less or people will be mum most of the times and naturally the employers talk more and the employees talk less if you live in this situation what we can expect of that reflection we have lost it way back i will tell you and we never try to understand what inquiry is if we had try to understand regarding inquiry we would we would have reflected all these years so reflection as well as the inquiry they are they are the two faces of a single coin as we can say next one excuse me so for please okay so we all know that philosophy is a love of wisdom every individual wants to know more about the wisdom it's a simple thing greek word we all know that but in real sense the philosophy has to be understood in a different pattern yeah. like philosophy is nothing but inquiry philosophy is nothing but inquiry and reflection all these years we have trained we have told that philosophy is just love of wisdom yes of course but it is a half a part but try to disseminate the philosophy in terms of knowing more in terms of inquiring the things in terms of reflecting so that is very important and normally we reflect we know the things the world not just regarding any subject it is to the entire world or it is to the total human experience so that is philosophy i the philosophy was as i rightly mentioned that it was the base of everything actually but later on we classified it into humanities arts sciences social sciences but till today we get the highest degree that is philosophy of sciences philosophy of arts humanities because philosophy is a base for everything next slide next slide please i what matters important is always the philosophers wanted to try to carefully criticize the things they were very critical until today if you want to claim yourself as a philosopher you must be critical you must be careful in analyzing the things i normally philosophers do that they should know what the theory of reality is try to understand what reality is in every aspect it may be in terms of the matter in terms of the different religions in terms of the different patterns of our life and entire the society too so that is nothing but what exists that is the area of important uh, area of philosophy we call it as a metaphysics which was already rightly mentioned by shapiro as well as ningama betsur ma and philosophy always try to know what we know regarding the knowledge we call it as the epistemology theory of knowledge what we have to know what is existed what is beyond the knowledge so that is the area we call it as epistemology and the third important thing is ethics how we live it is not just the knowledge it is not just the reality it is also part of our life how we live how we must live how other people are living and what is the role of mind in others people life so it is also philosophy so don't think that philosophy is just morality philosophy is not just value pattern philosophy is more than that so this has to be understood by all the teachers whatever subject you may teach wherever you may teach wherever you be we all live under a big umbrella that is philosophy whatever we do whatever we think whatever we act everything comes under philosophical domain i what philosophical inquiry comprises you are talking about philosophical inquiry philosophical inquiry comprises the shared experiences everybody's experiences are vital because we all live in the society every individual's experiences reflect on others life so hence philosophical inquiry is not just in individualized thing it is more the society oriented though it starts from individual but it reaches to the society hence we need to have more collaborative activities more cooperative approaches in our day to day life as well as into the classrooms 
time, whatever the shared experiences which we have, it creates community. Whatever the replicas we are seeing in the society, it is because of the shared activities. So that is what the philosophical inquiry will do, how we are living. And the third important thing is consideration beyond the common sense. The philosophy will not stop at just common sense, it goes beyond. What is beyond that actually? So that we can enrich our humanity. So that is philosophical inquiry. And there is a strong relationship between philosophy and education. If you take any aspect of education, everything must be based on philosophy. You take the teaching methods, you take the objectives of education, you take the teaching styles, you take the values of a teacher, you take the examination pattern, everything. So hence there is a strong relationship. We cannot move in the education without philosophy. So philosophical inquiry is very much required in every aspect of teaching learning process. Teachers must understand how to use it into the classroom so that so that our students can reflect more and more. So that is the important thing. Next slide. And if you come to the teacher education sector directly, because we consider NCT is one of the important uh, statutory body which gives its own recommendations for the teacher's preparation in this country. And it has rightly said two important aspects. One is in uh, 2007, it has rightly mentioned that we need competent teachers into the fields. Competencies play a very important role into the teaching profession. And what competencies? It has given a list of competencies. With that list, it rightly mentioned that human approach is very important for teacher preparation. Whatever techniques you teach, whatever methodologies you teach, yes, no doubt about that. But with that, extra element is required, that is human approach. How to be being human with the students? How to be being human with the colleagues? How to be being human with the society? Is very important. So that is what the need of the art. And another important document we have, that is NC of 2005, which has also rightly mentioned that to use constructivist approach into the teaching learning process in the school setting. Because constructivism is an important theory which has rightly mentioned the use of social elements, learning in a society, learning in a collaborative manner, learning in a cooperative manner, yes, that is required. But all these years, we tried our level best to teach individually, to make our students to go into the race without considering the other friends. So peer tutoring, peer uh, learning process is very important for the present situation and that is what reflection is all about. We can expect the reflection only when we allow our students to think and act into the group, groups so that everybody's reflection can be accumulated and can, we can think of that inquiry. The total philosophical inquiry can be imbibed in our activities. Next slide. And two year BA course has rightly mentioned we want the reflective practitioners. The very aim of the BA curriculum is make our student teachers as not just practitioners, we want them to reflect on every aspect of the teaching learning process. And it has rightly also mentioned that we can expect the professional development through reflection. So reflection should be the part of professional development. And now comes, what is reflection? Yes, as I rightly mentioned, it is a meta-cognitive strategy, thinking of thinking, that has rightly been mentioned by uh, Professor Shapiro. And thinking critically, that's what a very important thing is. What we have to think critically, we can think critically the experiences what we have in the learning process, the experiences what we have in our life, the actions which we take, the decisions which we come across. So all these aspects, if we think critically, that is itself a reflection. And next, why do we reflect? So reflection is a part of everybody's life. That's what we expect from the teacher's point of view, as well as we expect from the student's point of view also. So teachers have to think how best we can make our students to reflect on different issues. And why do we, re uh, why do we need to reflect? We reflect for the deeper understandings. When we reflect, we will come to know many issues. We, 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 we will come to know our teaching styles, we will come to know what kind of beliefs I have, and we will also come to know what identities teacher is having. 
So that's what reflection is required. Next slide. And this diagram will give you actually, we are talking about more learning. Everybody is more concerned about the learning process. To think of learning process, you should go back again. Start from the experience. If you want to give the experience, experiences will give it to the reflection. So provide more experiences so that they can reflect on different experiences. When they start reflecting on different experiences, definitely it leads to the learning process. So don't go directly to the learning process. Most of the time we do that. So if you want to expect learning process from the students, try to concentrate more on experience. So because experiences only provide the reflection opportunity. Next. And Morris L. Bigge, he has given a very important concept regarding the cognitive levels of reflection. He has listed out three important levels, knowledge, understanding and reflection. It depends on the teacher and the kind of a student wherein you can uh, uh, disseminate your information, you to decide whether you want to go for your teaching learning process to a knowledge level, understanding level or you expect something more than that, then there may be a reflective level of teaching. So memory, understanding and reflection is a part of teaching learning process but reflection is highest level of teaching. If students are ready to reflect means it also indicates that they are already having that memory as well as understanding level and they can analyze, apply, synthesize as well as they can evaluate the things also. Next one. And what we can do in the reflection? Yes, teachers and learners they have to work collaboratively as well as cooperatively to investigate something. Most of the time what we do in different subjects, we investigate one of the aspects and we allot the rest of the aspects to the students to do it themselves. But that may not be the good strategy for finding out or expecting the reflection. Always try to be with your children, be with your students in the uh, <coughs> investigation procedures. And next, screen them. If you get any information regarding that, try to screen them, which is the apt one, which is the not apt one. And based on the hypothesis, whatever you frame, you just screen them properly so that you can come out with certain decisions. So that is how we can expect the reflection kind of a thing from students through our different teaching subjects. Next. And this is how you can plan your teaching also for the reflective teaching. Starts with collecting data, think that any issue you come across in your teaching process. So collect the data, next try to analyze it and evaluate it with your students. Then reflect on that, ask every children to reflect based on the data which they get and based on the analysis they have made. And next, again replan it if it, if it doesn't fit into that, make decisions and act according to your plan. If it is solved, then stop it, otherwise it will be continued to the next cycle also. So this is how reflection, reflective teaching can be bring into the classroom. Then, what, what, what normally we do in the reflective teaching, we integrate the theory and practice. Most of the time, we, we discuss or we, we just uh, uh, give a lecture on the different theories. So what about the practical aspect? If you want to add or if you want to join the theoretical aspects with the practical, yes, the reflective teaching would be a very ideal approach for a teacher to do that. I, the constructivist approach is also part of reflection. You can make use of that also. Giving the more experienced based learning situations to the students so that they can reflect. So hence, reflective teaching includes or we, where we can uh, uh, collaborate the theory as well as the practice as well as the constructivist approach. And there are a number of benefits. We have all discussed it. Next slide. And the important strategies we have so that we can use into the teaching learning process for the reflection is the best thing is journal. Journal. Yes. Next slide please. Yes. These are the important strategies we have. You can use any one among them or sometimes you can use more than one also. Yes, the self-analysis is very important for the reflection. Either you do it or you allot it to your students for, the, for their reflection. Self-analysis is, it is not just the strengths. It can be failure also. Because sometimes failures will teach you a lot more things 
than the success. And sometimes failures can be a, 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 a important element for getting the success also. So like that, don't don't think that only the favorableness or the positive uh, elements are very vital for the self analysis. So self analysis can be in the negative aspects also. So make those self analysis things. Write the journals. Write the writing the journal means how you teach, what you teach, what problems you got in your teaching learning process, and how you solved it. So these are the aspects. If you can list out, that can be a very good journal writing. Next. Keeping a portfolio, it's a privacy, but the common, uh, 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 the personalized things, if you want to add something, to write something, so that you can reflect later on, yes, the portfolios will be very useful for a teacher. And the next one, observations of the student responses, normally we get in the classrooms, or, at, or else at the end of the classroom, that can be a very good uh, strategy for the teacher, as well as questions at the end of every lesson. We will come to know what has been happened so that students can reflect more on that. Okay? So these are the important strategies we can make use in our teaching learning process to bring the next slide. Reflection. Yes, the two important uh, issues we, where, where we can uh, give a link to the reflection teaching is one is the Irwin Mumsman in 1950. He has rightly mentioned that if you want to give a reflective teaching, you should have two important components in your teaching process. One is the convergent strategy and the other is divergent strategy. Try to make your lessons based on these two important strategies so that every time the students can come out with their own opinions, they can come out with their own ideas so that reflection can be expected. That is one important thing. The second important dimension I can quote here is Benjamin S. Bloom's classification of cognitive objectives. He has listed six different objectives. Three he has considered as a lower level objectives and the three rest are higher level objectives. So higher level objectives if you want to achieve, definitely it helps in providing an opportunity for reflection. Those are the analysis, synthesis and evaluation. So these two approaches will help us in understanding the reflective kind of teaching. And we can ensure that, we can ensure that three important things in the constructive, uh, reflective teaching. The first one is, teacher should have a clarity of the goal. The first important that teacher has to consider is clarity of the goal. The second one is, to what extent he wants to do it actually. The extent is also very important so that development of resources can be possible can be reachable to the students. Second aspect. And third important aspect is using the methods. Have a clear goal, consider the developmental aspects, and third important is the methods which we use. So if a teacher considers these three important things, definitely he can reach the reflective kind of teaching. Next slide. Yes, these are some of the, again, uh, the nature as we can say, try to have more dialogue kind of a, uh, approach in your teaching learning process rather than monologic. What is it? Try to provide ample opportunity for the students to share their views in the learning process and teacher has to play a role of a manager rather than teaching everything. We always hold all the responsibility of teaching in the classrooms many of the times. And at the end of semester you find teachers just running into the classrooms. You stop them and ask why you are going so quickly to the class. And all the teachers will say that I have to cover the syllabus. Please remember the teacher's role is to be uncovering the syllabus. Teacher should not cover it. Try to say what is there in the syllabus. So hence, it is not that only teacher has to give every information. Provide the opportunities so that students can come out with their own views and try to have a good discourses so that we can expect some kind of reflection from students for that. Okay, next. And to prepare the effective reflective teachers, we have a conceptual model that is ACHIEVE model. ACHIEVE is an acronym which we have used here. A is for ability. 
from the teacher's point of view, ability is very important. What is that ability? It is the acquisition of competence. Unless teacher has that ability, he can or she cannot perform it actually. So knowledge, skills and experiences count a lot in performing. So hence ability is required. C is for clarity. Clarity in terms of understanding how, why, what. How to do, what to do and when to do it. And next, H is for help. Try to facilitate for your effective usage of that approach. So help is very important. And see that the human value element can also be included in every aspect of your teaching learning process. It is not just content dissemination. How best a teacher can add it is also important. So that is help, H element. And I is for incentives, or as you can say, it's a motivation factor. What incentives you are providing. So always, both institution as well as individual part is very important there. So hence, I is for incentive. And next, E for evaluation. So evaluate it, try to provide a benchmark, how, to, how you are going to evaluate, not just on memory. Most of the time we, we, we assess, or the assessment patterns will be on memory based. So in reflection teaching, teaching, most of the time we can't rely on memory based or understanding based. It is beyond that actually. So hence evaluation is also very important and provide the valid feedback. Next V is for validity. Validity is nothing but respecting the legal provisions of every learner. Try to see that how best the disadvantaged section of the group we have dealt, we have helped them in the learning process. So that equal opportunity will be given to all the learners. Next, the E stands for environment. Environment is not just the external environment, it is also internal environment. How best a student feels that, yes, I will be having equal, equal opportunity to reflect myself in the classroom is important. So that kind of environment is to be created by the teacher in the classroom. So these are the seven important steps we have listed here. It's an acronym based achieve model. Next slide. So the last one, reflection of human values mentioned in the Indian constitution is very important for every teacher. We, we, we may be having number of philosophers, philosophies, but at least as we are following a Indian constitution, as we claim ourselves as the uh, democratic country, so those values will also be very important for every teacher, like liberty, equality, fraternity and secularism. Let's respect every religion. Let's respect every individual, irrespective of the caste, creed, religion, region, gender. And reflection on international understanding also. Next, that's the next move. After having our vision, how best we can reach at the international level? What kind of brother, brotherhoodness we can develop among our students? And reflective teachers must have self-awareness as well as patience. Please remember this. Two important qualities of a teacher who wants to take up the class in terms of reflective teaching. Patience as well as self-awareness. Because knowledge makes the man more calm. We are talking more, unnecessary talking is going on in the classroom also. Let's stop it. Let's be calm. Let's be focused. So that's required. I be at college, training period. How to be patient in different situations. Tumba Pata content to methods Bere bere situations only, patient are hanging beku, patients in the hang behavior to beku, hang emotionally balance agir beku, no kalas beka. That is what reflection is. Yaro ever heard on Takshan, Harad, George, 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 Matati. Adru reflection illandala, but hang in Nibhais beku, no perfect. So, like that, when you expect reflection, you uh, and the students try to see that they must inquire the things and they should inquire based on philosophical background. That's what philosophy is. Try to maintain the equality in the classroom. That's the best philosophy, I would say. 
be impartial in the classroom. That is the best philosophy in the classroom. So hopefully, whatever information I bought to share with you, I achieved it. And thank you very much for giving me this wonderful opportunity for Dr. Mohan sir. Because uh, all of a sudden he called me just three days back and asked me to present this. Though I was not a specialist in this area, and uh, many aspects have been I have taken from even Shapiro uh, book also he has given me on 15. And just I read why Plato was wrong. <laughs> of course. Puttatane elder philosophers in Thar, Ella Magavigo philosophy got to Yaki and then Magu Prashne Madame. But Dodo Radang Adang, eh? A Prashne Madame Kosha and the Kalakomitin. A Nehru Kerala, Tapur Ru Kerala, Matana Velru scholars got on the Helpota Divi, Solpa Gaira early, Solpa Gatitana Tavana, a knowledge in the Prashna Suvana Kalyana first now. Are there any Makalu Helpona? So, you direct the molecule of the and the use of the Unless you teach them how to receive it, how to question it, how to validate it, how to critically analyze it. So, we want that kind of persons for tomorrow's world. They will be useful for not just India, they will be useful for the entire world. Okay? Thank you very much for your patience. In two or three sentences, why Plato is wrong? Because all good philosophers are good educators. That's why I am asking. So. I asked Professor Shapiro to answer it because he is the one. Yes, I have read it. I know why it is wrong. And I am also in favor of Shapiro's views, actually. So I, I think he can give you a better uh, view of that. Sir, before answering that, my question is also related to that. Yes, yes, please, so, so so that you get together. Yes, yes, yes. Please, sir, please come here. See, because, uh, see, Plato, you said that Plato is wrong. But uh, what children ask? I'll try to answer both of those questions. First, um, let me go on record as saying, Plato was not wrong about everything. <laughs> Plato was right about many things. He was also... Um, as a philosopher, one of the exciting things about philosophy, and one of the things we encourage students, um, when, you, when you do philosophy, you, you become in, uh, involved in a great conversation. Uh, so, um, here I am in the 21st century, um, I get to have a dialogue, as Dr. Dengue was saying, uh, with, um, with Plato, uh, with the great philosophers throughout history. Um, and my only small point of, of the title of the book, Plato Was Wrong, was simply that Plato was wrong about uh, at the point at which we should encourage students to do philosophy. Plato argued that we um, ought not, excuse me, Plato argued that we ought not to encourage people to do philosophy until, as this gentleman said, as they, until they achieve a certain level of maturity, um, and my contention uh, is simply that it's something that we ought to encourage from the youngest of ages. And indeed, something that happens quite naturally. Um, so Plato was wrong about that. Um, I, I believe he was right about many things. I believe he was right about the theory of knowledge. I believe he had some very good ideas about uh, the, uh, the proper way to organize uh, the state. I'm all in favor of philosopher kings, for, for instance. Um, in, in response to your thoughtful questions, so um, absolutely, uh, the questions of children uh, are different than the questions of adults. Uh, as we mature, or uh, the reasons we have questions are different than the sort of natural curiosity of young people. Um, but but I would um, at least entertain the idea that while the questions themselves, the specifics of the questions are different. Um, the, um, the subject matter of the questions is quite similar. Um, as Dr. Dangi pointed out, the different areas of philosophy, epistemology, the nature of knowledge, metaphysics, the nature of reality, axiology, the nature of value, um, those questions are articulated by young people um, in a 
in a different way than they're articulated by mature adults, but the same areas of inquiry um, are explored. Um, and so while the specifics of the questions, as you rightly point out, are quite different as we age, I would at least, again, once again, entertain the idea that the substance of the questions is similar in young people as it is in uh, uh, mature adults. So myself want to uh, add on to this uh, Plato's teacher, Socrates. So Socratesian method as we are away question is better intellectual ability than answering. So even in our uh, college education, we insist on the students to see the difference of intellectual ability. Answering the question, questioning the answer. So I think uh, before Plato only, Socrates was with them. Uh, he asked his Greek men to question, question, question. So I think uh, uh, our beloved, uh, learned uh, professor, Dr. David Professor, will also uh, agree that prior to Plato, there was a questioning from Socrates. So I think uh, Plato just uh, continued uh, that uh, philosophy from Socrates. Social heredity, maybe. So, Is it, sir? Yes, so Plato was very much impressed by the philosophy of Socrates and even the Socrates, when he uh, took, uh, attended the discourses with the Socrates, he has no, uh, write down in 10 volumes of books, that is Republic. In the 7th volume, professor has identified that element. So all the discourses of the Socrates, you find it in Republic. Try to read it actually, it's very much important because based on the Republic, many nations have built their uh, democratic setups, even the uh, political uh, agendas have been developed based on the uh, republic actually. It's one of the best volume, the best, uh, uh, the discourses we can find in uh, republic actually. It is also useful for the teachers, where uh, uh, the Pluto was rightly mentioned how discourses used to be continued, carried out, how opportunities used to be given to the students to ask the questions. So that was the basic theme. You find number of different uh, aspects related to teaching, related to politics, society, culture, everything you find it in Republic. So I hope yes, Professor will also agree with that. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Let me ask one question you sir. Philosophy teaches that the evaluation of humanity in the process of understanding reality and nature, it is possible sir in present situation? Surely. Uh, uh, thank you very much for identifying this element. Most of the teachers think that, is it possible? Yes, definitely. We, we are doing it since our childhood. Isn't it? Every day we ask number of questions. Every day we come out with different situations. And we try to analyze them based on our experiences. So that is itself a philosophy. That is itself a philosophy. It is not that, that only my experiences I evaluate. I also evaluate the experiences of the society also, experiences of my co-workers, uh, co-teachers, my friends also. So entirely what we are doing here, we are inquiring everything, we are inquiring and some things we accept it and some things we reject it also. So rejecting accepting is not important, inquiring is important. So that's what the basic thing of philosophy is also, knowing the things.